Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please feel free to write to me at walkwithtak at gmail.com if you have any questions regarding to this video or any other videos that I've posted in the past. If you have any video that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. One of the greatest advantages of home cooking is the ability to cook almost anything that you would like. The flexibility of home cooking particularly is significant when you use my fast cooking system, which is flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. When you have the cooking system, you have the basic technique as well as the resources to cook almost anything that you would like. In this case, allow you to cook dishes particularly suited to your own personal preference as well as the availability of ingredients at the time. Now, this particular video, I'm going to demonstrate a friend of mine. Uh, he is a great gardener. Each year, he grows a lot of amazing tomatoes, and he loves tomatoes. And he finds that uh, using up his tomatoes sometimes can be quite a challenge. He loves tomato soup, and he has been thinking what are the best ways to use them. Now, garden tomatoes is particularly great for making soup uh, because they are low in acidity as compared to commercial tomatoes and they gave much greater flavor. And of course, we all know tomatoes are rich in umami molecules. So this is what makes tomato savory and enjoyable. So in this case, uh, his approach is that how can he create a tomato soup that he is going to enjoy? And he find that the best way uh, is to find another ingredient that he loves that he can create a tomato soup using this ingredients together, which is only possible uh, for him when he cooked for himself, and in his case, that is bacon. Now, he loves bacon, uh, but he also uh, know that uh, he should not eat too much bacon. So he quite often, when he cut bacon, he will cut them up and portion them in the size that he wants, and he uses his bacon in many different capacities. He used them for uh, cooking his omelette, he used his bacon for making uh, stir-frying dishes, so in this case, he decided that uh, this might be a good idea to make use of his bacon. And here is where he come up with a great idea, not only to create the flavor that he wants, but he also able to make use every part of the bacon. So he will freeze his bacon in the portion that he think will work for each of his dishes, and he is able to freeze it in such a way that will allow him to fold them out rapidly so he can have bacon almost any time he wants. Now I'm going to uh, reproduce the dish that he cooked. So I'm going to use some bacon and I'm going to cook this dish with my cast iron wok. Now my goal is that I'm going to fry the bacon and that's exactly what he did. He's going to fry the bacon and to create a crispy texture of the bacon. Now everybody loved the bacon that are being fried up and crisp. And then what he's going to do, which I thought it was a great idea, and he's going to garnish his uh, tomato soup with bacon. And this will give the tomato soup not only with the flavor of the bacon, but it also provides an interesting texture. Now, as you all know, that when you cook bacon, it releases a lot of oil, and he's going to make use of the oil as well. Now, this is my cask. Uh, iron wok, and I love cast iron wok, but I do not use it very much for stir frying. And one of the main reasons is that cast iron wok takes a lot of time to heat it up. Well, because it has a great heat holding capacity. In, normally, it would take about maybe one minute to heat up a uh, carbon steel wok when it's ready to uh, add cooking oil. But for carbon steel wok, it might take as long as three to four minutes. Now, the bacon's pretty much fried to the way how I like to. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set them aside so that I will use them later uh, for me to put on top of the tomato soup. And you will find out that it provides absolutely wonderful flavor and texture to the tomato soup. Now, I have never had tomato soup like this before. So this is a demonstration of how to make home cooking creative. Here, I'm going to use the tomatoes that I got from the, my friend. Now, normally people do not use tomatoes to make tomato soup. And partly, first of all, tomatoes are quite expensive. 
And secondly is that store-bought tomatoes are not ripened on the vine and therefore they lack the flavor as well as the texture that you will find from uh, garden tomatoes. These tomatoes uh, given to me by my friend is absolutely at its best condition. They are not only beautiful, but they truly has wonderful flavor. Uh, normally, most of the store-bought tomatoes are raised in a different way. In fact, they are picked from the vine uh, usually before they turn red, and they will store in warehouses, and then they will ripen it uh, by using artificial means. This makes the tomatoes lack the flavor that you want. Now, tomato is very flavorful. Tomato is one of the few uh, plants that has high level of umami molecules, and this is the reason why we love tomatoes so much. However, this umami flavor in the tomatoes are only most obvious when the tomatoes are ripened properly. And also, a ripened tomatoes will have the proper combinations of uh, sugar as well as the uh, acidity that you find in it. So because of these reasons, uh, I always use fresh tomatoes when I make a tomato soup, and it truly makes the best tomato soup that I have ever had. Now, as you can see here, uh, the entire soup, uh, the volume of the liquid from the soup are actually comes directly from the tomatoes. So you can see that uh, you are drinking basically tomato juice. But of course, we know uh, tomatoes has a lot of water and the co water content for tomatoes is uh, as high as 95%. So basically, uh, you have a uh, tomato soup directly from uh, the ingredients come from the tomatoes. And again, this is the type of soup. It's hard to find unless you have great tomato like this. So if you have garden tomatoes and you have fresh tomatoes available to you, this is what I would recommend you to do. So I boil the tomatoes, and uh, after I boiling them, as you can see, uh, the skin uh, start to come off. So I use a pair of uh, long handle tongs uh, to gently remove the skin. Uh, this is a little bit uh, time consuming and a little bit tedious, but it's certainly worth it. Uh, you do not want the skin left in your soup because it will not make the soup taste quite right. And uh, so I often take the time and to remove as much skin as I possibly can. Uh, this is probably is the part of the step that is time consuming. Uh, as you can see, as I continue to boil the tomato soup, uh, the skin come off res readily. Now you notice that when I add the tomatoes to the soup, I left the fat that come from the uh, bacon in the wok. Now this is the part which I think is great because the fat really add flavor to the tomatoes. It uh, helped to modulate the acidity of the tomatoes and to make it taste uh, more, I would call it, uh, have this more meat-like flavor. And when you combine the natural umami flavor come from the tomato, as well as the umami flavor uh, come from the bacon, it really create an excellent uh, flavor. And of course, also bacon are salty. And the fats left behind will actually season the tomato soup. So right there, the fat not only provides uh, the oil that will make the soup more interesting, but it also will create a bacon flavor uh, in the soup. However, uh, to make sure that I have the flavor that I want, I also add some of my wok with that basic seasoning mix. And this seasoning mix, again, uh, is a very mild seasoning mix, but it and intend to enhance the natural flavor of the ingredient because it contains additional umami molecules. My fast cooking system contains four components, but one of the most important components is flavor chasing. A flavor chasing is the idea is that you continue to modify the flavor of your dish until you find the flavor that you will like. At this point, I'm going to turn off the heat because I'm going to make an egg dropped tomato soup. Now, my friend loves egg drop soup. Now, to create an egg drop soup, the goal is that to uh, create thin threads of uh, eggs. And in order to achieve that, you need to turn down the heat because by turning down the heat when the egg is dropped into uh, the soup. So I add the egg a little bit at a time. And this is really important because if you add the egg too quickly, then everything is going to cook almost right away. By adding them a little bit at a time, uh, it will allow you to cook the egg slowly. And consequently, uh, you will form thin, uh, basically strands of eggs. And that uh, really makes the culinary experience more uh, interesting. And so using this method, uh, you can create a nice egg drop soup. And this method can be a 
apply to almost any type of uh, a cooking situation that you want to create this kind of an egg drop. And for example, the famous uh, hot and sour soup uh, using the same approach. And also the same approach uh, can be used in other type of cooking, such as uh, you want to make a uh, shrimp and lobster sauce, which require egg drop. You can do it the same way. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your uh, daily routine uh, by using my fast cooking system. And with flavor chasing, event prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking, you can make home cooking practical, efficient, creative, and fun. So if you'd like to learn more about my cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking and I will see you tomorrow.